Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple database-driven web app with Vapor. To get the most out of this screencast, it would help if you understand just a little bit about Vapor, specifically routing persistence, templates, and controllers. If you're new on any of that, don't worry, I have some other screencasts that cover these topics. Today, we're going to put all of that together to create a simple web app called TIL, or Today I Learned. The goal is this app will help you keep track of acronyms like BRB or AFK and what they mean like be right back or away from keyboard. A big shout out to Audrey Tam for the idea behind this web app. I have a simple project here where I've already done three things. First, I created a model object for the acronyms that we'll be storing in this web app. It has two properties to store the short and the long versions of the acronym. For example, short might hold BRB and long might hold be right back. I made this object derived from model, which is the class that you should derive from in Vapor to store an object in the database. I've also implemented four required methods. The first two methods convert the object to and from node. Node is an intermediate data format that allows your object's data to easily be converted to alternate representations, such as JSON or values to be stored in the database. The final two methods prepare and revert the database table this model object will be stored in. Second, I've configured my app to use a database. Specifically, I'm using PostgreSQL here, but everything we'll do in this screencast applies to any database provider that you might prefer. Third, I've set up a controller with a single route for the index. This displays a simple leaf template called index, which loops through the acronyms and displays each one. It is using a CSS boilerplate library called Skeleton to beautify the page a little bit using a grid system. If I build and run and navigate to the index page, this is what I see so far. Basically a simple list of acronyms in the database. This is a good start, but so far the app isn't very interactive. In this screencast, we're going to make the app fully interactive by doing two things. First, we'll add the ability to add new acronyms. And second, we'll add the ability to delete acronyms. To add new acronyms, the basic idea is we want to embed a form on the web page that gathers the short and the long form of the acronym from the user. Back in our controller, we'll create a new route that looks for a post to that path. Then we'll pull out the data from the post, create a new acronym object, and insert it into the database. First, let's create the HTML for the form. To do this, I'll open up index.leaf, create a new row, and make it full width. I'll create a heading here that says add new acronym. Next, I'll create a form that will submit a post to slash TIL. I'll create a new row, and the first column will be three columns wide. This is where you'll enter the short form of the acronym. So I'll give it a label and an input field called short that fills up the entire column. Next, I'll create another column with more space, nine columns wide this time. This is where you enter the long form of the acronym. So I'll also give that a label and input field with the name long that fills up the entire column. If I build and run and refresh the page, I see the new form. However, watch what happens if I try to change something while the app is still running. Let's move the input area above the list of acronyms. If I do this and refresh, nothing happens. This is because the page is cached. So if I build and run again and refresh, well, now I see the changes. Sometimes it's annoying to have to build and run every time as you are tweaking HTML and CSS. And luckily, Vapor allows you to disable this cache if you want. To do this, I'll open main.swift. I'll get a hold of the droplets view renderer. I'll cast it as a leaf render since we know we're using leaf. This has a property called stem and I can just set the cache to nil. I can verify this works by building and running, switching back to index.leaf and making a change. Actually, we need a submit button, so let's add that. Now, if I refresh my browser, I see the new save button appear without having to stop and rerun. Note that this form won't do anything yet because I haven't yet added a route to handle this post from the form. To do this, I'll open TILcontroller.swift and add a new add acronym method. I'll check the post data to look for a short and a long value. Remember, we set up our HTML input elements to use those names. If they aren't there, we'll abort. Next, I'll create an acronym object with these values and try saving it to the database. If it works, I want to refresh the web page. I could copy and paste our code from the index route, but there's a better way. I'll simply redirect the browser to the index page. This is easy with Vapor. I can just return a response redirect with the path that I want to redirect to. Finally, I just need to register this new route, build and run, and try entering a new acronym into the web app. And nice, it works and shows up on the page. 
Now that our app can list and create acronyms, there's just one step left, the ability to delete acronyms. This is a review of the techniques we've done already, so it should be pretty quick. Back in index.leaf, I'll fill in that three column section to have a form that posts to a specially formatted URL. It will be acronyms, then the ID of the acronym to delete, and then finally delete. I just chose this URL scheme because it seemed to make sense to me, but you could design it differently if you'd like. Inside, I'll just put a button that says delete. Next, I'll open tilcontroller.swift and add a new route. The first parameter will be the request as usual, but now I'll add a second parameter that is an acronym. Remember, the way this works is that Vapor automatically looks up an acronym in the database based on the ID in the URL and passes us the resulting acronym. If there is no such acronym with this ID, the route will fail automatically. Inside, all you need to do is call delete on the acronym and then redirect the page. Finally, I'll register this route, passing in the first part of the path we expect, an acronym type, and then the second part of the path, delete. We'll call it delete acronym in this case. If I build and run and try deleting some acronyms, all right, it works. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to create a basic web app using Vapor. So far, we've been working with a fairly simple data model. You may wonder how we can work with models that might have relationships, such as maybe a user that has their own personal collection of acronyms. And that's what we'll be looking at in the next screencast. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this simple web app, and I'll TTYL.